Jacob uh, Andrew Walther, thank you so much indeed for joining me. What group do you represent? Well, I'm representing um, the blockade IMARC Alliance, which has been organising the mass blockade that um, happened today of the International Mining and Resources Conference. And what right do you have to stop people from peacefully meeting and talking in a conference? Well, I think the fact that um, this is a conference that's bringing together, you know, some of the worst kind of corporations, uh, you know, who are getting away with trampling on the rights of Indigenous people's land, uh, exploiting workers and polluting the environment. Um, I think, you know, Australia is a democracy. Uh, we've been organising this uh, protest for months and, you know, Australia may be a democracy. My, protest, no, no, my, uh, question, was a democracy. Specific. my question was quite specific. I, um, we actually have laws to stop what you say these uh, companies are doing. My question was quite specific. What right do you have to stop people from lawfully and peacefully meeting and talking? I think we have every right to um, when these people are sacrificing our very future. We have a duty to act um, for our own future when we live in a climate crisis and these people who are gathering at the conference are completely unaccountable to the greater public. Well, if I think that your politics is endangering my future or my children's future, do I have a right to take a bunch of my mates and blockade you from, you know, stopping you from entering an office or leaving your home? Well, I think, you know, it's all about power and numbers. If, um, if you have the power to mobilise people in support of your cause, I think you have every right to. So you wouldn't complain if I turned up with a bunch of mates outside your home and stopped you from leaving it? Well, we would mobilise to say that we don't agree with your ideas and we reject them wholeheartedly. So it'd be a brawl in your street. That's how we sort out our arguments, is it? What do you mean? Well, your group brawl against my group see who's the most powerful. Well, it's all about who can mobilise the most numbers. There's been refugee rights rallies where far-right uh, Nazis have attempted to counter-protest and they've been tiny in numbers and we've pretty much overwhelmed them with our sheer numbers. So that's how we sort out our uh, arguments, our disagreements, by force of numbers, by physical violence. No, um, our protest has been completely violent. Since when did we use any form of violence? Four policemen were, take, were uh, injured, three taken to hospital today. What about the woman that was trampled by a police horse? What about what her? Is not what about the fact that the police aggressively attacked us with bat um, batons and pepper spray? When we'll you were stopping people from legally and peacefully entering a, me a meeting to simply talk. I think there are bigger issues at play here, I think, where we're living in a climate crisis. We need to actually organise uh, and make these people... What about the fact that Oceana Gold, one of the companies that is represented here, is building a copper mine that nobody wants in the Philippines and has been the subject of, of mass protests? What about the rights what of the Philippines? What about is all very case? well, but the point is how we settle our disputes in a democratic society. Is it with using physical force, threats, intimidation, abuse, uh, trying to stop people from doing, going about their lawful business, or is it with reasoned arguments and let people make up their own minds? What right do you have to stop people from using our roads? Well, we have every right. We have every right to organise a protest because protests are inherently disruptive. So if we organise a, gr a group of people then uh, stop you from using the road outside your home, you'd be quite OK with their right to do that? Yeah, if it was for a just cause. Yeah, well, your idea of a just cause and my idea of a just cause, of course, different. This is the whole point. How do you sort out an argument civilly in a society like ours without people getting hurt and police being taken to hospital? Um, why don't you well, just we, put the arguments we... to people and let them decide on the merits of those arguments rather than out of fear that they're going to be bullied or their bus businesses ruined? So we've been, there's been um, scientific evidence that um, um, we're living in a climate crisis and that our... That's not my argument. That's not my argument. That, no, 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 no. There's been all this scientific evidence. We've been putting... There's all these rational that? arguments out there. We actually mm. have no choice but to organise a mass democratic protest with mass participation. And well, the, the, the power of our numbers with you. would go... I mean, one of the people on your spokesperson list uh, is a bloke that stood for the Socialist Party in a very left-wing uh, state of the last election in Moorland, he get, got less than 5% of the vote. He put his arguments out there. The voters in one of the most left-wing seats in the country said no. Uh, end of argument, isn't it? 
Oh. Um, isn't it the right for people to democratically put their ideas forward? Absolutely, like and that's why you're on this show. Absolutely. But it's not your right to stop people from simply having a debate, having an argument, just having an argument or going to a meeting or using the road. That's my point. I just don't know why well, again, you feel... The, some of the, uh, the people that are gathering at this com um, conference are some of the most unaccountable, undemocratic people who get away with building minds, colluding with uh, uh, um, dictatorships. Uh, they get away with polluting the environment and nothing is being made to make them account. Hence why Blockade IMAC has come together because we felt we had no choice but to act. Well, you do have choices. You have choices not to punch or hit police or hit police horses. You have choices. Well, yeah. Everyone's got a choice. Well, you maybe the police me, could have um, made that choice because they're, really... the who, they're the ones who attacked us first. They're the ones who well, attacked us first. No, we have always said our protest is non-violent. But now, when you use your physical force to stop people from entering, you're already saying this is a contest of force, of violence. So, you know, I don't buy that excuse. Can you just tell me, isn't this really less about global warming and mining, and more about your plans for a socialist revolution? Well, I think um, the aim of the protest is to make the... Uh, is to raise awareness to the public um, that these mining companies have to be made accountable for the destruction they're wrecking onto the earth. I think it's, got, it's well, gone way bigger than just their, uh, them simply having a meeting. Uh, look, you ignored my question again. Let me put it in a different way. Aren't you, in fact, from the Socialist Alliance? Haven't you, in fact, been... Uh, on the executive oh, social uh, on the executive council of the Socialist Alliance. Yeah, I'm a member of Socialist Alliance and proud of it. But there are Why many you groups say involved so the first in, um, in the blockade. Um, it's a collection of different social. There's a number of different socialist organisations involved. There's a lot of different environmental actors groups involved who have all come together, as is our democratic right, to shut down this conference and to ma and to disrupt business as usual for these mining corporations. Oh yes, it is your democratic right. But I'm just saying. As a Democrat, I certainly stand for your democratic right to protest, not to hit people or stop them from going about their lawful business, of course, but to protest. I just wonder whether I would have that same freedom under the socialist uh, nirvana that you're aiming for, because isn't the real aim of the Socialist Alliance, as expressed on your website, for taking over private businesses from the banks down, putting them under so-called workers and community control, like we saw under the Soviet Union, of course, lifting the top tax rate to 70%, dismantling what you call the institutions that protect and defend this ruling elite, such as parliament, police, the military, government administration. Isn't that your real aim? Well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a personal aim for me as, as someone who is... Well, it's not just you. I'm looking at other people on this list. I'm looking at other people on this list. It's, uh, you've got members of the, a couple of members, too, from the Socialist... Uh, alternative that's there, they've got the same aim, just dismantle police and the military, go for a revolution. Uh, democracy uh, that we've got is no good. Uh, it's their, their aim too. Isn't that your real aim? Well, uh, every, every, um, every revolution has to have mass support. We, um, both our organisations are up for... If we can win the public to the idea of seizing the, the power away from the capitalists, uh, then I think we have every right to. It's majority rules. No, but it isn't because one of your can one of your spokespeople, like I said, stood for election in the city of Moreland, got less than five percent of the vote. You couldn't cop the majority rule on that. In fact, you're taking the streets and wanting to sort it out by force. Yeah. So we're we're simply yeah. advocating for an idea that we hope to, that will win majority support in the future. No, because it was a majority support. Because you stand for election and you take what the majority said, but you didn't. You stood for one of your people stood for election, got less than five percent of the vote, mm. and now you're fighting in the street. Police are getting hurt. People are getting stopped from just having a talk. Well, like, there's plenty. The you what do realise there's plenty of people who have participated in the blockade of this mining conference who are not socialists, who are not revolutionaries, but believe that it is their moral duty as citizens uh, to stand up to these unaccountable mining corporations who are getting away with polluting the earth. Dispossessing yeah, that might be true for land. some of the people. We had, that we had, we had traditional your owners. Of spokespeople. Um, the majority of your spokespeople on the list that you provided are, in fact, Marxists. Yeah, so? <laughs> well, don't try to tell me. So what's, it's so what's, about the, what's the issue with that? Global warming. Can you tell me, the, you've quoted in your writings that Cuba should be one of the countries we look up to as uh, our model. Uh, can you tell me 
the model that you're looking is socialist revolution, workers' control, uh, no private enterprise, all that kind of stuff. Can you point to... Those all sound like world? really great things to me, um, to be honest. Yeah, um, I, I know. It's a, yeah, but this is what disturbs... And me. if we can win, and if we can like win mass democratic happened, for them, it'll be tens great. Tens of millions of people have died and you haven't noticed. Where has your economic model ever worked? Well, I think, I mean, when we look at, when we look at the destruction that, is wrecking, um, that capitalism is wrecking on the world, when you look at the fact that the 1%, uh, the minority, owns the majority of the world's wealth while poor people, while there are still people who are homeless on the streets of Melbourne while we have endless wealth, I actually think we have to advocate for alternative, and I'm happily will be again? a minority Can I ask of again? that in. Where has your economic model ever worked? Because I've been to some of these countries where it's... I've been to Cambodia, I've been to China, there's Russia, of course, you recommend Cuba. Uh, where has it ever worked? East Germany, Bulgaria, the Czech Republic, Poland. I mean, I'm giving you a list. Pick one where it's ever worked. I think the whole idea of, you know, building the case of socialism is what we do have to have majority support. A lot of those past revolutions were undone by bureaucratic regimes, they were undone by, you know, uh, because the essence of socialism is democracy and we want to have win democratic support for our ideas. And of course, right. you bring up Cuba, you know, I, Cuba has a lot of problems being uh, a third world country or a developing country, but it is a country that offers free healthcare and free education. When you look at a country yes, like the United does, States, but it where also there are free speech. starving it bans and, uh, free and uh, going to poverty... I couldn't talk there like you could talk here, right? I couldn't talk there like you could talk here. And I'd be jailed there like you're not jailed here. All right? That's Cuba for you. It's a dictatorship, Jacob. And the point is, uh, more than 100 million people have died under the sort of things that you've been recommending, and you still don't learn the lesson, and you just want to foment trouble in the street, inconvenience a lot of people, put police in hospital and claim, oh, you're the innocent guy here. Please, Jacob, it's a frolic for you. Well, but for me personally, the taxpayers my a lot idea, of money my idea, it's hurting a lot of police, yeah, and a... I wish you would stop. Yeah. Well, my well, how, how do your how, parents Andrew, talk to you? How do you... Okay, excuse right. me. Don't get you, keep, you keep going on a red hair in the... Okay. All right, Jacob, uh, Andrew Walter, thank you so much for your time.